Welcome back and good morning. We are here with another edition of Backwoods Teacher Modern U.S. History Edition. Today we're going to take a look at the economic recovery programs in Nazi Germany. You will be compiling all the information from the first two weeks into a paper later this week. You will be able to use all of your notes when you write. Answering the questions below will give you those notes. What were the relief and recovery programs in Nazi Germany? How are the programs similar to programs in the United States? How were the CCC and the SA similar and different? How were Hitler and FDR similar in their leadership styles? Compare Nazi propaganda and New Deal propaganda. How were the Nazis able to use economic recovery to assume control of Germany? The idea of assuming control, we're going to call that reform in Germany. These are all of the different programs we'll take a look at. These programs are listed here on this video for you to take a look at at your convenience the SA, the German Labor Front, the Reich Labor Service, uh, their use of public works, the SDA, which stands for Beauty of Labor in English, Strength to Joy, the SS or Schutzstaffel, the Bureau of Deutsche Mädchen, League of German Girls, and the NSV, the WHW, and of course the Hitler Youth. Okay, some of the details here were lost. Let me move a few of these. We could see them a little better. And here we go. Okay, one of the things that I want you to understand with this presentation is that as the Nazis also, Hitler took control of German society. This was no easy task. There are different aspects to society that they had to deal with. They couldn't just roll in and take over. There were, back up, up here, you have one of the more simple aspects of children and youth. You have the general population. You have uh, the poor. You have the wealthy, you have industry, industrial owners, you have factory owners, you have uh, industrial labor unions, you have bankers, you have the military, and you have a really troublesome group, professors, teachers, and students. You have farmers, you have journalists, which are definitely a group that need to be controlled, and then you have the religious groups. Christians, the preachers, the priests, and then you have the Jews and groups like Jehovah's Witnesses. Also, the Nazis had to deal with another group that were essentially their, their enemy on the opposite end of the political spectrum, and that was the Socialist Party. All right, there are distinct parallels between the two countries at this time. Both countries were going through severe economic depression and had a lack of effective leadership. They had an unpopular and ineffectual government at the time of economic collapse. A new charismatic leader was elected. This leader takes bold initiative to bring about change. This new leader consolidates political power in order to achieve his plans. Government's control of the economy occurs, empowerment of labor unions in return for political loyalty, public works programs, state control of banks, the state control, training citizens, public architecture programs, public art programs, propaganda, and the organization of the unemployed into armies monitored by the state. One of the ideas that we'll be looking at again and that I want you to examine is the idea of a, a cult of personality 
built up around the leader. Over here, uh, typical that everyone knows there was something of a cult of personality built up around Hitler. Very much similar thing occurred with FDR in the United States. A great deal of effort was put into creating artwork, sculptures, posters, uh, etc., portraying his leadership skills, giving him different symbolic leadership roles, such as this ship's captain in a perfect storm. Hitler was portrayed as sort of a mythical, mythological uh, father figure, restoring Germany's uh, return to glory. All right, let's take a quick look at the CCC compared to the SA. We've taken a look at the CCC already. The SA uh, stands for Sturm und Bartlung. And these two groups have similarities and differences. One of the similarities, or some of the similarities, are as follows. They both enlisted young and unemployed males. These males were trained by the government. They did work for the government. They were organized in a military fashion, such as platoons and units. They had military leaders. They had an inspirational overall leader. They often wore uniforms, surplus uniforms. This is why the SA were referred to as the brown shirts. They were given surplus uniforms. The idea of these young men marching around in military uniforms flew in the face of the Treaty of Versailles. The United States, however, was doing the same thing. They made use of a, of a resource, these excess military uniforms, to clothe these young workers. Both groups engaged in physical activity and work. Both were recovery programs. They were both paid. All right. The CCC, however, worked primarily on conservation projects, digging ditches, planting trees, clearing out uh, roadways. Their work was intended to be a stepping stone to recovery. They were encouraged to work out of the program and save money for the program, or excuse me, save money for the family. The SA, however, began as campaign workers, setting up chairs, passing out flyers, putting up posters and handbills, but eventually they became Hitler's security. They became hardline party members down the road. They were used to attack and silence any critics during the speeches of the Nazi party, any hecklers. They were there kind of like a, a, a posse to, uh, for an entertainer to make sure that no one gets out of hand. All right, both countries engaged in public works programs. In the case of Nazi Germany, one of the their one of their labor unions, as depicted back here with this big gear, this is for one of their their auto workers union. Uh, it was connected to the production of the Volkswagen, and the Volkswagen is already in in the works, but the the Nazis used this to. Uh, show well, almost as a form of not relief, but giving uh, the common people access to a, a higher standard of living. It showed their economic programs. This was tied in with the development of the Autobahn, which is similar to the development of Route 66 in the United States. Uh, the Autobahn was built through their recovery and labor. Uh, they were, the road was designed to travel through the most beautiful parts of Germany to celebrate the, the glory of Germany's countryside, much like Route 66 has an intended route, has an intended path. This is a monument to Nazi uh, members of the Nazi party who perished during their early rise. This was somewhat ironic as the party was new at the time of this. Uh, they they had not been around very long, and this monument was built to give them something of a, a sense of history, even though they didn't have much history yet. So it was a public works program and propaganda. It would be it would be similar to the in the United States to the Republicans or Democrats uh, building a monument to themselves and using taxpayers' money to do so. This is a photo of the rally grounds in uh, Germany that the Nazis had built. 
This serves several purposes. This rally ground was created to organize the people and give them a place to uh, gather and be at the same place basically at the same time. If you notice, marching through the middle of this rally ground are different units. In some cases, these, these would later be used for the military, but the first groups to march through here were all of the economic recovery groups, the SA, the, the Young uh, German Girls Organization, the Hitler Youth, the automotive workers, and so on. The rally ground was built by public labor. It was built to, you know, re to help restore uh, people's faith in the government to give them jobs, to get them back on their feet, but it later becomes a form of social control. This is the rally ground at night. It's an, a, pretty, a pretty impressive feat. The Nazi party invented the rock concert before the rock concert even came on. Those beams of light shooting up into the air are uh, anti-aircraft lights, they're lights, spotlights, floodlights designed to uh, help in case of air raids. They use them to create sort of like a large theatrical columns. It would have the same effect as a large pep assembly. Think about that the next time you're at a pep assembly, stamping your feet, cheering madly, you're engaging in the same type of behavior. These are some examples of other programs. Uh, I wanted to show you these images to show you propaganda that m you may not find because if you search for Nazi propaganda, usually you will just find stuff related to Hitler. Notice over here on the right the two flags. The original flag for the agricultural workers starts out with grains of uh, possibly wheat and a shovel. Eventually that shovel is replaced by the swastika. This shows you that the intent of their recovery programs, as opposed to programs in the United States, was to assume control. The programs begin in a benevolent fashion, and then eventually they become political and they stay in power. Over on the other side, we have the uh, uh, program for family. It shows the father. He's cut off, unfortunately, on top of the slide, but it shows almost a Disney Disney type scene of the family a wholesome family surrounded by a working father. Down below is a uh, poster for the WHW, Winter Hilfswerk, which was a program that gave money to, usually to war veterans, I believe, and was uh, it was a way that the Nazis could be established as being generous and helping, especially the wives of veterans. I'll show you one more real quick before we sign off. These are the two images for the Hitler Youth. The Hitler Youth, if you notice over here, were, hang on a minute, the Hitler Youth were uh, young boys, in this case, who engaged in similar activities to the SA. They were often given uh, tug of war, hikes, camping, and so on. It's hard to see on the image on the uh, other side, but those young lads are wearing uh, helmets and gas masks as they play tug of war. There are stories that teachers in Germany complain that all the young kids were often so tired from attending these constant activities that they were asleep in class. But it's pretty obvious from the uh, image on the other side that the focus of this program was to indoctrinate the young people. This is going to be it for today. We'll pick back up tomorrow with the Young Machins group.